Recycle, the utterly game-changing software that genuinely revolutionized the early days of sample flipping and became a standard sample library format across nearly every DAW, is now free. You heard me, it's free. And that means it is a no-brainer to see how the classic Recycle and Rex file workflow can inspire new ideas in your own music. Because it's true that by changing our processes, we change the results we get. Let's do a little history first. The year is 1994, and I am at the peak of my coolness and in no way going to regret photos like these. I just got my first sampler and I was getting deeper into music production. Now samplers felt very high tech at the time, but the workflow, well, it sucked. You'd record audio into your sampler and the sample you recorded determined the tempo of your song. If you changed the pitch of your sample, the whole thing sped up or slowed down. If you wanted to do the advanced technique of slicing up the sample to re-trigger each beat independently and to juggle the sample around a little bit, well, the first thing you did was make a cup of tea and mentally prepare yourself to settle in for the hours of work ahead of you on a fiddly LED screen with no waveform display to help you out. And Recycle changed all that. Using the then revolutionary concept of transient beat detection, Recycle basically automated the process of identifying the beats and slices of a sample. Originally, it was meant to send those slices over to your hardware sampler. But once the computer was involved in prepping the sample, it was only logical to stay in the box to produce. And thus, the Rex file format that Recycle invented became widely adopted across DAWs. Recycle was and is still an amazing tool for getting that old school hip hop sound. Being able to easily slice up a sample to juggle it around, being able to change the pitch of a sample without changing the tempo or vice versa, it completely changed the way that people made music with samples. And if you haven't messed around with it in your own music making, well, it might just change that too. So let's get to know Recycle, and then let's take a look at how we use the Rex files created with it in Reason. Recycle works directly with sound files like WAVE or AIFF files, so let's open up some hip-hop drums that I've got. Before we dive in, Recycle wants to know the length of this loop. And if we don't know that already, we can count it out beforehand. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Okay, so it's four bars long. The Recycle window is a fairly familiar looking sample editor if you've ever used one before or even clicked on the Edit Sample button in Reason to bring up its own internal sample waveform editor. At the top are a series of tools we'll be using, transport controls, some settings about the loop, and then we've got three effects sections to process our Rex loop. These aren't effects like reverb or distortion that you might first associate with that term. These are Recycle's way of effecting the quality and character of our sample loop. It's things like envelope shaping for each slice of a beat, equalizer curves that shape the tonality, or dynamics shaping to enhance transients. I can toggle on preview, and then I'm ready to slice up my sample and adjust any of these effects along the way, previewing how they impact my sample. And this is where Recycle's transient detection comes into play. As soon as I move the sensitivity slider, you'll see Recycle identifies a series of beat slices in my drum beat. Clicking any one of them plays that single slice. And it's all pretty automatic and magical, until it isn't. This one slice here contains two drum hits. This other slice contains three, a kick, a snare, and a hi-hat. And if we left this as is and changed the tempo of our loop and our DAW down the road, the timing of these three hits wouldn't change, resulting in something that sounds offbeat. So we want to make sure each transient hit of the drums gets its own slice. And we do that by dialing up the sensitivity higher. Once I move it above 15, you'll see a new slice marker appear here. But we can still see some transient peaks without slice markers, so we'll keep dragging it higher and higher until every one of them has been identified. If we go too far, we'll start seeing slices appearing where no transient beats really actually occurring. But 65 seems like the sweet spot where every beat has its own slice marker. Since sample slicing is the primary role of Recycle, let's save this file at this point and move it over to Reason, where I'll show you how I like to use Rex loops like this. The same Rex2 document format that we save as in Recycle happens to also be the file format used by the Dr. Octorex loop player inside Reason. We can drag and drop that Rex file onto our Dr. Octorex device to load it in the loop player. I press play, 
and our recycle sample is now playing back inside Reason with an immediate demonstration of the Rex file format's ability to adapt to our song's tempo. If I slow down my song, our Rex loop stays in time. The same is true if I change the pitch of my sample. Dr. Octorex also includes some sound design controls, like an onboard filter to give my loop a darker vibe. By this point, pitch shifting and filtering this loop, it's starting to draw my ear away from this loop's hip hop origins and more towards like a percussive texture, one that would benefit from some much needed spice, courtesy of Ripley Space Delay's default preset called, well, much needed spice. By heading over to the Reason Companion and installing a Reason Plus sound pack called Monophonic Sequences, I can start to shape out this idea with a couple of synth textures, like this pattern sequence line, and another on top for some interplay. and maybe some Radical Keys melody of my own that I'll play. And that's the basic recycle music making workflow when everything is pretty straightforward. Our sample loop had clearly defined transients that really only required us to find the right sensitivity setting, and then we let it play back in Reason from start to finish as a loop. Let's take a look at a slightly more nuanced sample that requires a slightly more nuanced workflow. I found this song, and I was drawn to its opening riff. So I downloaded it and chopped out those measures into their own sample that I'll open in Recycle. Just like before, I want to tell Recycle the length of my sample loop, and also, just like before, this one is four bars long. I'll turn on preview, and let's start moving up the sensitivity slider. You might notice right away that unlike our drum beat where the slice markers appeared nearly instantaneously, this sample is more ambiguous. Most of the slices are identified once we get to 84 on the sensitivity slider, but not all slices are identified. And if we go just one more tick to 85, you'll see some of those erroneous transients being misidentified, like these close together slices here or this slice that got split up into two, when back at an 84 sensitivity level, you can hear it's clearly just one sample. So what do we do when one sensitivity setting isn't sensitive enough to work for all slices, but another is too sensitive? The answer is that we have to help Recycle know which sensitive slices are keepers and which aren't. Let's take the first slice as an example. I can clearly hear two transients in the guitar riff. The second one happens around here. So I'll dial up the sensitivity until I see that Recycle has placed a slice marker there. And then I'll select the lock tool and click the triangle atop the slice marker to lock it in place. Now, no matter how low I move the sensitivity, that slice will always remain. I tend to move through a Rex loop like this to verify slice by slice that I've got all my transients marked. When I come to one that needs some manual help like this one here, I repeat the process dialing up the sensitivity, locking the correct slices, and dialing it back down to check and make sure that I've got two independent slices. Back at the sensitivity setting of 84, most slices are found automatically, a couple I've locked in manually at a higher sensitivity setting, and then there's this one. This one is the opposite problem. It's reacting too sensitively and identifying a beat slice where none exists but lowering the sensitivity would impact all those other automatic slice markers. Instead of having to lock them all and reduce our global sensitivity to make this one slice disappear, I can select the mute tool and disable this extra slice marker. For a punchy riff like this, I might want to enhance these transients to make each slice a little more impactful. Recycle has a built-in compressor that acts to shape transients, either enhancing them or softening them. I'll choose one of the presets, and we can both hear the more compressed sound while also seeing the results on the meters. And of course, if I want to adjust the settings manually, 
you can see the familiar compressor settings like threshold or attack. Now I've got a Rex loop with a sliced up guitar riff ready for music making. And I can save this Rex file and load it into Reason like I did before, or I can streamline that process a bit by dragging this Rex file over to Reason directly. In Reason, I've got my Rex loop loaded in a Dr. Octorex just as before. This time I won't repitch it, but I will bump up the tempo a touch and load some Deep House drums. And that's all well and good, but unlike the first song we built, I'm not entirely happy to just let this loop play from start to finish. If you listen, the hi-hats enter the picture in the original riff, but I don't want the hi-hat part in my loop. So, the beauty of the Rex loop format and Dr. Octorex as a device is that we aren't beholden to playing the loop as it is from top to tail. If I first turn off this simple full loop playback mode, expand Dr. Octorex to show the waveform display, and right click, I can choose Copy Loop to Track, and we'll get a MIDI clip in our sequencer which, when played back, sounds identical. But this MIDI clip has each slice from our Rex loop as its own MIDI note, so I can chop and rearrange this clip, getting rid of the measures with the hi-hats, repeating the same measure before it. I can also go into the clip editor and fix another thing that my ear doesn't like. The very first slice includes a bass note. Bum. That note. Do you hear it? I don't want that note. If I click and drag this MIDI note higher, I'll play a different slice from my Rex loop. In fact, if I activate Select Slice via MIDI on the front panel of Dr. Octorex, you'll even see each slice selected visually while I move the MIDI note. And I'm just looking for that same basic guitar riff note, but without the underlying bass tone that's present in the first slice. That's it. What we end up with is a riff that starts clean and without the bass tone that I didn't want, and it no longer includes the hi-hat part of the sample. It's a clean, juggled loop. I'm going to put that same much-needed spice on this riff. We'll make it pump with the sidechain tool, and if I add a monotone bass synthesizer with the baseline generator player adding some groove, and a vocal sample that I'll run through the BVX vocoder for some robotic spice, along with our Deep House drums, Well, we've now used our crate digging Rex loop as a launching point for a whole new song. Okay, so by now you've got the gist of the recycle process and the Rex loop workflow back inside Reason. From here, well, things only get more experimental and playful as you start to dream up these weird ways of working with Rex files that you make in Recycle. I did a little more crate digging and found some unrelenting experimental synth jazz. And that is perfect for experimental synth textures in song ideas. I've loaded a four bar section into Recycle, and instead of manually adjusting the sensitivity to find all of these 16th note slices, since they're non-stop, I can go into the menu and choose Add Slices at 16th Notes to chop this up automatically. I'll also use the equalizer, since we haven't used it yet, and I'll choose a preset for band pass filtering to remove a lot of the low end weight to the sound. We'll bring it back over to Reason, disable the automatic loop playback, and this time, instead of copying this loop to a sequence or clip, I can use one of Reason's player MIDI effects to trigger the sample slices via MIDI. Pattern Mutator's 16 Steps pattern is a great place to start. Originally, it's just one note in a repeated 16th note pattern which plays only our first sample slice. But if we mutate that pattern to alter the rhythm and the pitch, we'll get a sample juggled pattern of slices that jump around our Rex loop. So that you can all visualize what's happening, I'll display our Rex waveform and enable Select Slice via MIDI again. The only issue here is that pattern gets quickly repetitive to the ear, which could be a good thing or a bad thing depending upon your taste. 
For me, I'd like to have some surprises to break up the pattern repetition. So I'll add a random tool beneath pattern mutator, set a note range and a percentage, which now means that 60% of the time, we'll get a different slice from the rex loop than what pattern mutator would have otherwise been playing. And I'll use the conditional pattern sequencer to disable certain steps as well. Now we've got something that sort of sounds random, yet also contains just enough of the repetition from Pattern Mutator to feel cohesive. And since it's a weird sound, I'll put a weird effect underneath it, like Synchronous's Telegraphing Bremen. But I'll blend the wet-dry control so that we can hear some of its modulation mixed with some of the original sound. And already, with just one recycle loop and a little bit of experimentation and reason, there's already a lot of places that I could imagine taking this and developing it into a beat. So, let me know in the comments where you might take it, because I'd like to compare ideas. Let's look at one more similar example just to demonstrate the other ways that we can experiment with Rex loops. This is a technique that I like to use when I'm building intensity in a song. I went crate digging again and found this pretty straight ahead trance beat. And it's got the same characteristics as before, that it's a 16th note pattern, so I'll use the same auto slice feature. I'll select a different EQ preset to thin this out a bit, and we'll move it over to Reason. Where I'll again turn off simple loop playback, and let's use a different player to generate the MIDI that will juggle our slices. This time, let's use Quad Note Generator to make a pattern. The default patch of Minor Folksy will work just fine, but I will change it to a monophonic mode since only one slice of our sample can play back at any one time anyway. I'll let Quad Note Generator run for a little bit, and then select a portion of the MIDI that it generated to freeze that and have it repeat the same sequence each time. When I do this, I always make sure to click the Store button so that my freeze buffer is saved in the device next time I open my song. That gives me a pattern that is half consistent and half generated that sounds like this. From there, I'll add effects to create mood and color. I'll distort this with some Scream 4 Crunch, I'll add one of my favorite third-party reverbs from Synapse Audio, and most importantly, I'll add a sweeper set to its low-pass ladder filter. And this is the key one, because now as I open up the filter, our pattern, which retains some musical harmonic sense of the original loop, will juggle and stutter and build in intensity alongside any other drums or fills that I might want to add to it to enhance that moment. So there you go. Those are just four ways that you can start using Recycle today to take your own loops, slice them up, and move them over to Reason or many other DAWs that support the Rex file format to bring sample juggling and creative sample flipping to your own beats and songs. If you've been relying on pre-made samples, there is a whole world for you to discover because, like I said from the start, changing our process changes our results. So good luck making some entirely new music with Recycle. <laughs>